So this micro lecture is on the conservation of momentum. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. So if you fire a gun, then the gun recoils back in addition to the, goal, uh, the bullets going forwards. So here we can see a bunch of people kind of really nervous uh, because this man fired a gun and we can see it kicking up. That's the recoil. So not only does a bullet go forward, but we also have the gun going backwards. And we can think of this in terms of Newton's third law since the gun applies a force to the bullet, the bullet also applies a force to the gun. Now that's an oversimplification, but you get the idea. Similarly, if we also look at uh, firing a cannon, then we can see more exaggerated effects. So not only does the cannonball go forward, but the cannon itself kicks back a little bit. Oftentimes you'll see them put on wheels for this reason, so that they kind of scoot back and nothing's damaged too much. And the reason why is because of the idea of conservation of momentum. So what that means is the momentum before a situation is equal to the momentum after the situation if there are no outside forces. An outside force would be uh, something else other than these two things applying a force to them uh, or to each other. So again, more formally, conservation momentum means momentum before is equal to the momentum after a collision or an action of some sort. And this assumes that there are no outside forces applied. So the only forces are those involved within like an action-reaction pair between the two objects you're considering. Or if there are three, maybe the cannonball is splitting into two or something like that, then it would just be between the cannon and the two halves of the cannonball. So if you fire a cannon, the cannon repoils, uh, oops, sorry, that's a um, previous slide. Uh, so more formally, what this looks like is if you add up the total momentum of the cannon and cannonball before, so the momentum of the cannon, the momentum of the cannonball happens to be zero since it's not moving. And then if you add up the total momentum of the cannon and cannonball after, it will also be zero because the before momentum must equal the total momentum after. So what that means is that the momentum of our cannonball has to equal the momentum of our cannon. So there'll be the same value just in opposite directions. So one will be positive and one will be negative. Let's look at another example. Another example is we've got two girls uh, standing on ice skates and they push each other. And we're assuming here that they have the same mass. Well, the total momentum before they push each other is zero. That means that the total momentum after they push each other will also be zero. So if this girl has, let's say, five units of momentum, then this girl will have negative five units of momentum, and that will add up to zero. So here the opposite directions mean we get different signs, and they'll cancel out. That's it for this one. Just a very brief introduction to conservation of momentum. We'll apply it in collisions more later on. Three bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.